Hi, my name is Greg Pato Sutty, and before I get any further, I want to just say I'm going to be doing a lot of reading in this episode, but uh, I am with different boards and MASL Off the Wall on this special edition of Ponto Off the Wall. I am rather humbled here to be with the Double Deuce Triple E, the one and only Julie V. Um, hi, Julie, and thank you so much for inviting us to your house. Thank you. Yeah, I know this is really cool. I was a regular in the San Diego Stadium before the soccer's ever took to the indoor game. And uh, I have a virtual lifetime memory of amazing memory of the soccer's and and uh, those days, those teams, the early days were a special time. So you went through the soccer's through a lot of change and growth and whatnot. But I want to talk a little bit about the outdoor, um, yeah. the outdoor years playing. And um, you've shown me some photographs here while we've been at your home today. And one of the things that uh, the people on those rosters. Those guys, I mean, the, the German connection that was on the, I mean, you had Lawrence yeah. Hilkes and Gert Wieserkowski. Well, Lawrence came later. He was playing for Edmonton. That was Gert Wieserkowski was here. The Volkmar Gross. Volkmar Gross. Um, Gene you, Wilrich hadn't shown Gene up yet. Gene oh, was there. No, he was here, yeah. Okay. Eric First Geyer? year. Eric came the second year. Okay. Yeah. So, so Gene, Volkmar. Um, first year... Wasn't even Walkmar because he played for Minnesota. It was Berg Wichajkowski and Gene. Right. And there was another guy from Bayern Munich. But he was he, he couldn't play anymore. Okay. So it was three or four German because Hubert was Austrian. Right, right, right. And so they brought these guys in. We had a good team. I was going to say right the, off the bat, and the team was a good team. We and, beat people for nothing. Absolutely, and yeah. and made playoffs every season. Oh yeah, four four uh, semifinals. Right, two two times Cosmos knocks us out. I, I was think. yeah, and and one of those, one yeah. of one of those was um the the soccer bowl was going to be in San Diego. Right, that's the one. Yeah, and, and that they, was they that was such allow, a heartbreak. Yeah, but they didn't allow Eddie Coker to play in New York. They I know what was up with that. Well, they they wanted to get you know Lawrence was not a bad player, but it wasn't close to Eddie Coker. Eddie Coker was and man, once Eddie him. got you know we didn't have a center forward. Right. It was a huge loss. Right. So yeah, and it just it was heartbreaking because I mean the the soccer ball was coming to San Diego. Tampa Bay. Alan Mayer was injured. Right. I was injured. We doing the uh, pouring rain. You can't even see the game. Yeah. And Gary Allison is the goalie, mm. and instead of tilting at all, he's trying to catch it. Okay. Well, you, you can't blame him. Whatever it is, it is. It is. Drops down, knock it in. We lost. So Tampa beat us. Cosmos, and then. We lost a shootout in Chicago. To the Sting. Yeah, which I, I blame Ron Newman on that. Oh, really? Talk about oh, that. Well, because usually I go last. With oh, Pajer, okay. Because we want to make sure, you know, pressure or so otherwise. You're, so, so you blame him on the way no, he ordered the players? That... No, this time we said we go first. Okay. Pajer goes first, I go second. Okay. Because we, we have a better chance of making it. And then Ron didn't do the right thing by calling out the players. Who were on the bench. Okay. So if you look at that game, we make it, Kaja makes it first, I make it second, that player's missing. So we two nothing up. Yeah. That's in the bag. Absolutely. Even if you're blind. You I know. Are, you're, <laughs> I know. You in. Yeah. Well, we missed the next three. Uh, and Martin they made Donnelly, the next three. Martin Donnelly shoots one. Vichakoski got a red card from Toro the because he mounted off. Yeah. <laughs> He was shoot, and then uh, I don't know if Adi was there or Hilkes or whoever, but that was uh, Steve Nessing from the bench mm -hmm. and Martin Donnelly from the defense. Uh, you know, he I should have he should have stepped on it and said these boys will shoot the penalty even if you don't want to. The soccer's weren't playing indoors at the time. No, but the MISL had started playing. They started a league, yeah. right? And, and they were, I think the seventy eight seventy nine was their first, right? And when did you this, play for New York? The next year, 79-80. Okay. Because when we came back 80-81, we were the worst team in the league. Right. Indoor. Right. And then 81-82, we win the, the first championship. Right. You got a championship in New York, though, didn't you? Right. Okay. Who was on that team with you? Well, the ones you guys know would be Bronco, who was 18, I think. Okay. Jungle. Right. Uh, Katakali, no, Katakali was on there yet. He came later. George Katakalidis was yeah, there. Yeah, Jungul and was Coker on Segota, that team? Adi Coker came back with me. Okay. So we had like three send yeah, Harshani, the Hungarian, okay. who was our captain here. Right. So we had three 
three San Diego players in there. Um, Shep Messing was in goal? Shep Messing was in goal, yes. Right. Uh, and then you came back to San Diego, and you've got the the outdoor season again. Well, we started the outdoor season, and then we finally, Bob Bell decided to go indoor. But right. And that first year in San Diego, the indoor was... was a night, absolute nightmare. <laughs> unspectacular, at least. Well, <laughs> there's five people there, friends and relatives. Right. And we're thinking, what's next? You know, I mean, this is a nightmare. And we had a pretty good team, but in the winter time. A lot of players wouldn't come back from Europe because Ron didn't want to pay. You know, oh, the really? club didn't want to pay. So really? in the winter time, anybody showed up with the shoes could play. You know, in the San Diego soccer, if you had a shoe, you played. <laughs> <laughs> and then we lost. We were dead last. Oh, I scored man. forty goals because that was fun for us to play. It was nothing to play for except for fun. Well, how did how did you feel at that point in time? How did you feel the the nature of the game suited your style of play? No, indoor was immediate. You know, even when I went to um, New York, it was mm. immediate. It, it fit me like a glove. Right. I loved the indoor, but you only had uh, six players mm -hmm. here with us, and the mm. rest were just young players or couldn't play at all. Interesting. At the first year. Right. Um, the first championship season was in 81, 82? Yes. And that was in ASL. NASL, yes. And it was the Tampa Bay Rowdies? Right. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, we beat them here, and then we have to go back and play them there. And if we lose, then there's a mini game there. Okay. So it's kind of unfair, but yeah, yeah. we said, who cares, you know? Right. And I was surprised that we beat up like 10, 8 or something, was, or 9, 7. Was like Chico Borja yet. on that team? No. Uh, you on know who was that? Hugo Perez was on it. Hugo Perez, that's who I was thinking of. Perez was on it, and Tatu was on it. Tatu was on it also. Yeah, wow. he was already coming up. He was their best player. He right. had an ankle problem here. But by that time, you see, then we signed, uh, who was on that? Uh, the uh, Nico Roman signed with us. Right, then I remember that, Nico. You had, so you had Martin. Wichaikovsky, right? Yeah, Nico Roman. Right. You had Volkmar Gross. Back to the German connection. You had yeah, Gene Willerich. Right. You had uh, Vidal Fernandez. Oh, that's right. Huge coming back from the Cosmos. Right. Because he couldn't play there. It was perfect for him to play with us. So we had Adi and me. Right. I mean, Chachanandar. Right. I think he came at the first year. No, he was on there first year. Anyway, uh, Steve Nessing was in the midfield. We did good. Yeah. So we had a better team. Right. And then we start clicking right. better. Um, then then uh, we've talked a little bit about the outdoor year, so I'm kind of jumping past yeah. that. Um, the next indoor season, the NASL decides they're not going to have an indoor season. So San Diego petitions the MISL. To get us in there, yeah. To go into the MISL along with, um, I think it was Chicago earthquakes and the, earthquakes, in, yeah. in, the earthquakes exactly. in, in, in Chicago. Um, so now you've got a whole different group of players and teams that you're playing against in this indoor right. season. But Chicago had a great team. Right. No, they did. And San Jose had a good team because New York is folding by this time. So San Jose gets Jungo, Segota, right. Clavillo, Catacolidos. Right. I mean, they're getting, yeah, well, well we beat them just as well. Was, <laughs> it didn't matter. And uh, working through that season, um, San Diego gets back into a championship series against this Baltimore Blast team. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, well, the, everybody said they were too old. These okay. guys, you know, our team was 33, 34 years right. average. Right. The other one's like 20, you know. So right. they said, I hear it now. Nah, someone put it on YouTube. Oh, they're going to get tired at the fourth quarter. Yeah, good luck with that. <laughs> stupid, <laughs> stupid idiot. Yeah. Was Did you see overall, did you see a difference in, um, in the skill level or the style of play that was going on in the MISL compared to what was going on, had been in the NASL? No, not that different. The players weren't mm -hmm. that that much better. Indoor, they just more concentrated now because some gotcha. of those players never played outdoor now. They just went indoor all the time. Right. Like a St. Louis, Kansas City. Right. And don't forget the NASL clamped down, said you cannot go to other, if you're going to go, you you finished here. So the players either Interesting. had to be loyal to the NASL or the MISL. Interesting. So I think from American soccer point of view, a big mistake. Right. The NASL should let it go. I, I so agree. We go outdoor. I agree. You guys do the indoor. And I agree. We'll 
work it together Absolutely. rather than well they try to compete the, I mean, you know, so, fit and, right. exactly they try to compete with ruined the, yeah ruined. exactly yeah ruined and, and uh so the baltimore blast lose that tournament that um championship to you guys and to the san diego soccers oh you're, they yeah. cheated so much there if you look at the game now mm -hmm. with an older uh, vision and mm -hmm. things it's unbelievable the calls Every, yeah. I mean, if no, you look, I, at, yeah, if you look at the foul ratio, yeah, no, they're I, fouling like 30 times to our six. I, I remember. Think about that. No, I mean, Julie, I remember being in the stands and it's like, we have to beat the team and the referees. Both of them. Yeah. yeah. Every, it was crazy. Well, listen to this. Uh, this one I have to uh, tire a little bit because this was, I think, one of the best indoor teams I ever played or seen. So we go play against... Um, Wichita, excellent oh, team. Which time with Jürgen Christians, yes, and, and yes. Brent Wen. You know, I mean, they have a great team. Yeah. And we beat them 4 3, mm. but nobody scores in the second half. Oh, my. So think about this. Wichita semifinal. Wow. Two quarters, no goal. Yeah. For Alan Mayer, for our defense. Right. Then Baltimore comes in. Oh, no, Four quarters, and six shut, nothing. Shut them out. I never saw that game. Yes. I would love to. I don't know who has it. No, it's on YouTube. I've seen it. Not the first one. Oh, the what first one's the not? six one. I can't find it. Okay. So they say it's an accident, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. Right, right. The second game, we beat them seven nothing. I know. Yeah, I know. So that's like 10 quarters of shut this out. team goes without indoor soccer. So you have to give a credit to the defenders. No kidding. Who are. Even the the ones who are not playing full time, right? Are they playing at their best? Right, right. I mean, the, and Alan I mean, Mayer was Alan Mayer was and Alan Mayer is like fearless. Yeah, he's one of crazy. The best ever. I know, crazy. Yeah, and going then in we, with his helmet head first the whole then thing. Then we go to Baltimore. You know, we lose four, three, and five, six, five. Right. Again, that's right. A nightmare, smaller place. That's right. They, then they come here. I remember that the ben the benches were offset too. I think. Yeah, there was a small field. I mean, they, they could beat anybody there, Baltimore, because it was so compact. Right. In a small field, anybody can win. Right. right. We needed a little way, but we did. We hold our own. I mean, sure. we only lost by one goal each. Right. Then we come back here, and then for three-quarter again, there is no goal. <laughs> I mean, it's a phenomenal success if you look at it's it. It's crazy. Yeah. Yes. It's crazy. And then if you look at our goal scorers, Audi Coker, 40 goals. Yeah. Cosdena, 40 goals. Uh, right. Vidal Fernandez, 38 or 40. Right. Think think of all the players who contributing here. I know. I mean, it's un unreal. Yeah, it was. What a good team. I, I mean, know. It was incredible. Incredible. It, you know, it's not just because we won the championship. That's how you win it. Right. And you know we destroyed that league. I mean, there's no doubt about it. No, and it was, and it was. We set the standard. Absolutely. And following that, then the NASL decides to have another indoor season. Another Mickey Mouse season, yeah. Right. And 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 so they take the champions from the MISL. Yeah. Well, because it's because Bob's you guys, fault. it's Bob's and Ron's fault because they could have said no. Really? Yeah, they could have said we're gonna go indoor, and so what? What are you gonna do? Because by '84, the league collapses anyway. That's right. That's right. So what that there year? Was, gonna there was only going to be one more season. Exactly. Right. Yeah. I didn't play the last season because there's no reason for it. Really? Yeah. You just stuck with the indoor game. I just, well, I played the indoor. Although by the time you add it up, you're looking at 60, 70, 80 games. Games a year. I know. And uh, you know it takes a, a tremendous toll on the body. So I right. figured if he's going to give me well, uh, my luck. <laughs> started when Bob Bell wanted me to play indoor outdoor and they saw that I was pretty good at indoor. So you. he said I give you a contract for seventy thousand outdoor indoor. Mind you at those days the uh, monies were like thirty thousand, mm -hmm. twenty five thousand, thirty thousand. So he said I give you seventy mm. outdoor indoor and then you're a free agent. Mm. So the first year we you know crappy completely. Mm -hmm. The second year we win the championship and I'm a free agent. So wow. it's so it's a lock of the then Kenny Cooper comes and he offers 150 grand. No kidding. Oh yeah. That was big money then. I guess. Bernie was the owner who owned the New York Arrows before that. Mm -hmm. I used to sit with Bernie looking at tapes with him. Wow. He was a good owner because yeah. he wanted to learn. Right. He had the passion and he bought New York and Baltimore. So what kept you from going to Baltimore? Baltimore. <laughs> 
I would uh, look, look, look around. Like, I went through Baltimore with a car one time, and I said I'd rather die. <laughs> I was forced to play in there, but gee. Oh I man! Know, I mean, you know, I would have done well with Baltimore. Sure. Uh, and Kenny, English, hopeless, couldn't understand anything in mm. indoor. Mm. He was one of those English. He was a goalkeeper for Ron Newman. That's right. In I know. Dallas. I know. I know. Yeah. So what? What he knows about indoor? Right. We played against them. He played Houston. Houston. Some I can't remember. Houston. Yeah. And they kicked the ball from the start into the corner, mm. and our player they took it off. Pa pa pa. One nothing. Next, kick it back. So this is what his strategy was. Gotcha. Because that's all they knew. That's right. Run and kick and. So in the so in the final NASL indoor season, the soccer's go to their championship. Yeah, we play the Cosmos. Them. Yeah, what a nightmare! I mean, we beat them here with ease and everything, and then you go there and there's like five hundred people. There. I know. Yeah, it's nobody a, there. It's a, yeah, well, they just could. You know, what was the seventy thousand used to come to the games all the time? The place was rocking. Exactly, yeah. So indoor was all, they didn't sell it well. They couldn't care less. The NASL was falling apart. That's right. why I fought uh, Ron and mm. Bob because they could have said out. Right. And just stick with the indoor from right. then on. What do you need? Was also? was yeah. there something to do with the with with a um, a being uh, what am I trying to say? An allegiance to the North American Soccer League. Or was there uh, a contractual obligation? I have no idea, honestly. You have to talk to someone who knows these things. I right. don't know what Bob what they had, but they could have very right. well said, "We're not going indoor. Right. Pay the well, because, fine or just quit." It. Because the next the 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 next off season from the indoor game was the last outdoor season of the NASL. Correct. Yeah. Then we go back in indoor again. And now you and then you went in with the strikers and the sting and yeah. the soccer's. Going into the MISL permanently, yes, and just make it and, and just make that happen. Yeah, the last season was a nightmare. I think they lost in a. I think Steve was playing here by then. Jungu for the outdoor Zoli, that was his first year here. Right, and then he started indoor. This is when, um, so they finished with the NASL. It's gone. And Bob Bell wants to go in the MISL, but guess what? The MISL says. Now you're gonna have to pay, right? Because we have a lot of teams now, right? And so they said you're gonna have to pay three hundred and fifty or two hundred fifty grand in up front. He doesn't have the money, so I I just signed a four year contract, no cut, no trade. So I didn't take the hundred and fifty from from Baltimore. Baltimore, and I said to my agent, was smart. He says, "You want security or you want money?" I said, security beats. He says, well, then let's go for four years, no cut, no trade contract, mm. and we'll take care of it from here on. Good. So I said, that's fine. You know, I got two children here. I just remember. Absolutely. So I don't want to. Priorities are right, and you got it. Right. So exactly. I'm in the middle of the, someone calls me, and they says, oh, we would love you to come over to Las Vegas with us. Right. I said, what are you talking about? What Las Vegas? I said, I just signed a contract last huh. year. Huh. I'm not going anywhere. What are you? And furthermore, it's against the law for you to call me. Okay. Oh, Bob Bell gave us permission. No way. Oh, really? Call Bob. Oh, well, they want to just talk to you, and why don't you just listen? I said, are you selling me? What? You cannot sell me because I have the right to negotiate. You, right. So he says, just listen to them. So oh. this group, I think they were laundering money through the Landmark Hotel. Sure, why not? The owner there. <laughs> Everybody else was. <laughs> took out a seventy million dollar loan. Wow! So wow! They, they spray painted the customers and the bed and the, everything. So I looked. New. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Remember how ugly those hotels? Absolutely. Were smoking. Yeah. The absolutely. beds were like this. Right. And, oh, <laughs> the sick. beds were like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> So anyway, the guy calls, and I said, I don't want to go anywhere. You know, I, no. have a, you know, I just remarried. I have the children here. We're doing good. We're yeah. just building a thing here. Yeah. We won three championships already. Nice. I said, oh, just listen. So, of course, I go like an idiot because, you know, they start jingling money left and right. They uh -huh. give you condominiums. I said, what if uh, I, I don't have the money to pay for them? Mm -hmm. Oh, then we could talk about some more. Anyway, the long story my my um, agent says, let's just ask one hundred eighty thousand. Huh. You know, every seller is like thirty five. 
you know, just let and then throw us out the window. I said, you go first. <laughs> Don't throw us out the yeah, window. He, yeah. So he writes all the stuff down, and then he says, Julie wants one hundred eighty thousand plus a little cash here and there. Yeah. yeah. Blah blah blah. And he agrees and he go, to it. And he goes, anything else? And I'm saying, ask for more. <laughs> Human nature, right? So he's, he said, no, this is good. Okay, that's it. So you, so you played a season in Las Vegas. Yeah. And so, what season was that? 84-85. That's when the soccer has been their fourth championship here. Okay, so that was when... Then so, I come back for the thumb. Remember right. The so we we so we, I'm we in skipped, Las Vegas. We yeah. skipped a season though. You you were with you were with the Soccers when no, the they three rematched. championship. We've been three championships. And the fourth one you were in Las Vegas. In I got gotcha. you. Okay. That's when the boys win the fourth championship. They won the fourth yeah. one against Baltimore again. Right. So yeah. you come back in when they're playing the um, one for the thumb. It's a Minnesota. It was the yes. Minnesota Strikers. Yeah, then they beat uh, what they a crazy, down like 3-1 or exactly. something. Exactly. Yeah. What a crazy series that was. I well, mean, you, you dropped down three games to one. It, it, the, we should have lost that one, actually. Uh, that was it. crazy. I think what happens with uh, teams like ours, we go there to battle, and then we win when it's necessary. Right. And, and then they got used to this. By the other teams, they think they 3-1 up. That's easy game. Right. We get it. Right. And then we beat them three times in a row. I was at. They should have won that game. No kidding. That's the coaches and the players' fault. There's no, no doubt kidding. about it. We weren't that much better at that moment. Yeah. But because they're, I don't know what their mindset, whatever. Well, I remember um, the the player on the strikers. I recall was was their co was their goalie. I mean, Tino Latiri. Tino, was, yeah, with yeah. the with the parrot with the yeah. parrot on the side yeah. there. <laughs> he's, he's still talking to him. Yeah, I heard that, that he's he's senile someplace. So he's talking to the parrot. He was he was flamboyant though. He was no, he was fun. Yeah. He was good for the game. Yeah, he sure was. In Vancouver. Yeah, we, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, he tried to hit the parrot just out of spite. <laughs> but it was good because he brought extra to the game. Everybody Absolutely. brought something. It was necessary. Yeah, it was fun. Absolutely. Um, you you were there for two more seasons after. Yeah, that. but wait. So Bob Bell sells. So he gets three hundred. Oh, that's grand. right. He sold the team. Yeah, but he no no no. That comes later. So he gets three hundred fifty thousand for me alone. Then he gets another two hundred fifty thousand for Alan Mayer, Vichaykovsky. Think about that. Uh, Jerry O'Kane, Martin Donnelly, and the money disappears. He was a charlatan at the end. Wow. I have my agent looking for him for one hundred fifty grand. No kidding. Oh, yeah. Later on, he took a lot of people out. I know two of them for sure. Oh, that's. Yeah, it was a charlatan. And then he sells the team. Right. Right after that for a million or something because we have 10 new owners coming in at 200 or 500 right. so apiece. Right, it was an ownership group. I don't remember who's yeah, in it. Well, but yeah, Rifkin just checked out with 20, 30 million for Pepsi or Coca-Cola. Then you had um, Ron Fowler, yeah. distributor, Leon Parma, another distributor. So we have like eight to ten of these big guys, so they ask us for a dinner. So I'm sitting across with them, and I'm trying to pitch uh, an idea to say the players are getting old. Right. Maybe a little job or something so we could continue. Right. Uh, nothing. Dead blank. So I went to the bathroom and pissed off right away. I said, You're done with so these Bob guys. Bell, where did you go? You know, yeah, I said, they didn't even care who, I, who everybody was here. Right. It's not about me or anything. It's about how right. you want to maintain a living where you don't, you know, like cause Dana. Right. Or or Gene Villarich or me for that matter. Right. I said, why not uh, create a club where we can work within the club, do Absolutely. the clinics. Absolutely. Do the camps. Absolutely. They they just could, they couldn't care less. It's totally what, hopeless. What year was that 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 happened? Um, Do you recall? 85, 86, because that's we miss one championship against uh, Tacoma. Right, Tacoma eliminated the they soccer. Beat, beat us at home, which is on you know two to one, or we win two. We right. couldn't score a goal. Right, um, that series went four games to three, I think. Yeah, 
Um, but uh, the they Dallas, were strong. They were, they were strong. strong. So I couldn't believe Dallas beat them. And then Dallas beats them. I'm playing soccer tennis with friends. You know, I played uh, 40 years soccer tennis. Yeah, I watched you and guys guy, do that a And one times. guy says, oh, let's watch the game. It's still on. I say, are you nuts? It's probably finished. And right. I couldn't care less. Right. I said, okay, that's why. Because we feel Tacoma going to beat Dallas. Right. Because we could have beat Dallas any time. Yep. I mean, I fit, you know, some teams fit you. Right. And so we watched the game. Five minutes to go. They're down by a goal. Dallas is, and they've been in the game in overtime. Tattoo played fat. The whole team plays fantastic, and they I could not believe it. I was in Kansas City. Um, this would have been a little bit later on, um, maybe 80, well, not the same time, maybe 86. And uh, the Sockers were staying at the same hotel I was in. And it was the, 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 the elevator with glass elevator and it went up right by the tennis courts that were above no. ground. And I'm in the elevator going to my room and I'm seeing you guys down on the tennis court oh, playing yeah. tennis soccer. Non -stop, yeah. It was crazy. I, I'd only seen this a couple of times and I mean, it's explain the game. Well, you play just like uh, tennis rules. You serve across. Except for it's not one on one. It's like five on five or something. No, two on two oh. or one on one. Oh, okay. Well, that time you probably just saw the team warming I, up. I was or yeah, right. Usually, just two pairs. Okay. And then you have one touch each. Wow. So once a ball hits you, it falls down. It's finished. Right. So it has to come the first bounce, and then you set up your partner. Okay. Yeah, a fantastic game. It teaches the kids more than any coach in five years. It was, it game. was, it was, I'm, I'm just kind of going. It's well, technical. I'm just kind of going, of course. I mean, of course. Oh, yeah. One-on-one. <laughs> -on -one. Yeah. And even now with Zoli, if I get him spruced up and everything, nobody can beat us. I really? Mean, any, are you kidding me? These boys from the soccers, we spank him like a baby. <laughs> just ask, ask him to challenge me and Zoli for a soccer tennis match. See what they say. Okay. See if you have to come up. <laughs> we, like, we like to see that. Yeah. Uh, all right. So then, so then we, we come back. This is now your last season with the Soccers, I think. Eighty-eight is the last one. So we we, we missed Stockholma, then right. we we in uh, Cleveland, and then what, and, Cleveland is the last one. Right. And and, and that was and, and here's here's a year here's a a, a season now. The MISL has gone to 56 game season. Yeah, longer. The, the soccer's go 40, 42 and 14 or something like that during the regular season and then just smoke right through Cleveland four yeah. games straight. Actually, I asked the boys, you know, when we've been two at home mm. and we've been one there, I said, let's drop one. No. Yeah, because to it's win always, it at home. It's always, yeah, you're going to have three to win it. Are you kidding me? That, that was a good team, Cleveland, but it wasn't above us. Right. You know, we fought hard, but it wasn't even close. I mean, right. technically, they were good, but right. you know, we talk about things. So you don't. You, so you're saying um, you are that cocky of a team to say we, we can just drop one in. in Could in you two. not put three at home? <laughs> I mean, you, you have another two at home, <laughs> right? And one more in. A, I mean, what's better for soccer? Think of it this way. Yes, absolutely. What's better to win the championship at home or yes. away from home, where three people will remember it? Right. While you win it at home, it's a huge. Look, look at Baltimore. Right. That give us the name. That give us the recognition. Right. That give us everything for this team. Right. And then. Um, I had the last season, and so I could have gone to play another place. Mm -hmm. So I finished my season here at 88, mm -hmm. and then they sent me a letter. You know, Fowler, the, the, the gangsters over there. <laughs> the gangsters. The Fowler, oh, Fowler gang. That's fun. Yeah, they sent me a letter say your services are no longer required after putting 10 years into this club, right? No. So I said, well, that's fine. I understand the business. But they're not paying me my forty or fifty thousand dollar that you owe me. Well, of course that's not going to happen. They stole the money. Did you ever get it? No, I, you gangsters won't give it. Are you kidding me? You ever heard of mafia giving money back? So I talked to the boys right away. I said if they can screw me. They're certainly going to screw you. Absolutely. And their own father goes on. Uh, remember they had the TV run. Keep the suckers alive. Yes. Yeah, they asked me, and I said, I'll help, but uh, how you got you just steal the boys' money too, so everybody got a pay cut right away. You know, in chapter 11, right? 
There you go. I mean, the the, the team ex- charlatans. The the team came up to what another three seasons or something like that afterwards. Yeah, before but by they that time, fall, that, so. by that time, they didn't do the homework because you have to go to the schools, you have to do the right. the neighborhood stuff, and you know, like when we started out here, Alan Mayer was in a hundred. Nobody knew anything about uh, PR, mm. especially the Europeans. Mm-hmm. So they bring you a piece of paper and say, oh, here's a clinic in Alpine or whatever, right. you know, Al Cajon. Right. And all the players said, I don't, I don't even know where it is and I don't care. Right. You know, this was 70. So Alan, Alan would say, oh, I'll, I'll do your clinic. Mm-hmm. Within six months, everybody knew who Alan Mayer was in the whole county. Absolutely. Nobody knew anybody else. Absolutely. So, But we didn't understand this. Well, we, we learned right. that. Right. But what I'm saying is that we built a good product here. No kidding. And these boys ran it down at the end because they didn't do the homework. They just took the money. And without the PR and pushing the game nonstop, right. this is what's going to happen. And within three or three and a half years, they were finished. Do you think that there was any sense that um, the soccer's being such a, so perennial in championship after year after year? Do you think that was overall a bad thing for the game in the league? Not, that, that no other team could you know, had a chance at getting there? They all had a chance. And if you look at all the championship, regardless of the MIS, it's not a walkthrough. Right. It's not like you're beating them 10 nothing and right. walking away. Right. Yes, like, for example, um, Tampa Bay, we 5 nothing first half. Because right. the team start playing like we... And then, of course, you let down, you know, going with intensity. They come back 5-4. Okay. And we have to kick some boys in the butt, mm-hmm. you know, and then we go... But it wasn't like a walkover. Right. Certainly... Uh, None of the team were a walkover. No. They were very close, and we just had that extra. At the end, it was over. I don't think it's a bad thing. I mean, they they had the chance. Look at Baltimore. Right. They were always there trying to win it. Yes. Yeah, well, there's there's four banners hanging up there with the Baltimore Blast. And, and, you know, to give Ron credit, he didn't know nothing about indoor. Well, no one did, really, but... Yeah, but you have a beginning. sense. You you know the players, uh, midfield players especially, okay. know what it's indoors about. So, but for him to manage all these bastard players, right? <laughs> bastard players. <laughs> I mean, poor man. I you know I used to run the Anthony the soccer club for seventeen years. Right. And my time came, I gave it to Guy. Right. Newman said, you know, because I had so much problem with your dad i feel guilty you can have oh, that's my job funny. yeah no this <laughs> is a true story that's, that's guy that's funny no because we had a chip on our shoulder and the other thing was uh you had a german you had a couple of irish boys that mm. they survived because bob bell claimed he was irish mm. so ron was english mm-hmm. I, you know I'll give you an example the team uh Team meeting. Okay. Martin said, "Hold on a second. Okay. He gets a newspaper out of the six Brits less. They're the bombings. So this is how this is our. Oh no! Team. Okay, right. This is how we started the meeting. Oh my gosh! So you understand what was happening there, and then oh Ron always wanted an English guy in here mm-hmm. to help him get Gary Collier and his son. That's right. At best, and Gary was a good player. The son did very well. Right. But we didn't want any other English. We mm. didn't see that it's necessary. Right. He kept going in. As soon as I heard that he went in to get on English, I went after him to cut his webbles off immediately. <laughs> I'm not, because we didn't want him here. Right. And, and I tell you what was the reason. <clears throat> most of the English, uh, I mean, most of the, uh, the clubs were run by English managers yes. and English coaches. Yes. So if you look at NASL, 24 teams, 20 was run by English coaches. Right. And they had their noses up in the air. Well, yeah. And they brought in their buddies from England. Yeah. Selling them as first division when they uh-huh. were third and second wow. at best. Wow. And finally, the Americans said, oh, look at Johnny. He's just as good as the first division English. Well, he was on free. He was third division. Wow. Couldn't play. So all of a sudden, the American players so think they're resent- better than they are. No, we had a resentment against the so. English because we saw what they were doing. Right. Then Rick Crow and these guys up in uh, 
Portland and uh, Vancouver, they would bring in like a guy and they said, oh, look at this guy, he's pretty good, six feet tall. He only cost 50 grand. Well, mm -hmm. he was useless and he didn't cost anything. So the American owner would sign the 50,000, they'll split the money. Wow. And this was on nonstop, this is a wow. scam. Oh, they got the guy in Vancouver. He says, well, everybody doing it, what are you gonna do about it? Oh, we fire you, okay. But he already walked away with hundreds of that. So wow. that's why we resented the English because they stole everything right. as coaches and managers. Right. You know, they backed each other. But at the same time, they never developed an American player. Never. Never had a second team that was worth for anything. Right. I mean, how stupid is to have a team and not have the next crop exactly. coming up? Exactly. And they had plenty of young Americans. So right. if you were American those days, don't look at us as, as naturalized citizens because you already had the basic skills. Sure. We had different. But if you look at those American boys, either you were a goalie or a fullback. Mm -hmm. Classic example, Tai Kyo, who came mm -hmm. from the university, mm -hmm. decent midfield player, maybe at American standard, mm -hmm. but he played left fullback and he hated it. So mm -hmm. the psyche and everything was destroyed for the Americans mm -hmm. through these English coaches, not developing them and not using them or even trying to. Or even trying to. Or even tr it was easier to call someone in England, oh yeah, he'll, you know, Sully will come over. Yeah. So you get a car. You get an apartment, and you get five thousand a month. And the whole time this is going on, the cult, the culture of soccer in America is not being given an opportunity to to become American. Zero, exactly, nothing. I mean, you're doing your, like, we have a USA contract, you know, the uh, television contract. Right. So everybody's happy with that, but then San Diego and New York and Chicago. They go and get their own little contract. Uh -huh. So USC and ESPN says, uh -huh. enough. Uh -huh. You guys do whatever you want. Rather right. than Absolutely. having a, a national thing yeah. for the outdoor and indoor. Right, right. The big organizations, the big media organizations say, you know what? Yeah. And and uh, don't forget the football, baseball, the basketball, hockey. They couldn't stand us because they're looking at it. It's a competition. Absolutely it was. I think football is going to be gone soon. And baseball, unless they revamp the, the rules, mm -hmm. you're going to fall asleep three more times. Plus, <laughs> the amount of money that you spend on a soccer game right now. No kidding. Compared to... No kidding. Think about it. Yeah. I mean, a lousy baseball game that you sit there yeah. that costs you a fortune to go with a family. Now. That's right, it does. Yeah, and you can and the, a soccer game is still extremely affordable. Exactly. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and they never they never developed it to the point where make it smaller, make it better. Well, Baltimore did. You have yeah. to give it. Cleveland did. Yeah. Chicago did. I mean, we did some. Right. But. If you look at it uh, from the 80s, early 80s, late 70s, Tampa Bay, 40,000, mm -hmm. uh, Vancouver, Portland, mm -hmm. Seattle, mm -hmm. 25,000 mm -hmm. season tickets. Mm -hmm. So it's like 35, 40,000, depends who comes in town. Right. So you have a viable league here. Yeah, absolutely. San Jose, yep. LA. And we made a mistake going in the Coliseum. Yeah, well. Actually, Ron Newman coached in a valley before he coached. I mean, he also, he had like three and a half, four thousand yes, in a valley. Yeah, so that's where they should have gone. Yeah, yeah. Some some of those venues, if you don't have an incredible crowd, you, it just gets lost in the venue. You like the Coliseum. Yeah, I exactly. Mean, unless, unless you have a huge crowd, the the like the whole here, thing. the best crowd we had is was when we got the Fourth uh, of July. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's right. It was the, 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 the KGB Sky Show or something like yeah, that. Yeah, remember? That's right. the best one for that's, us. That's, remember, they had Bob Hope coming yeah, out. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. I, you know, I would love to see, you know, maybe you could through you somehow. Remember Bob Hope came and gave us some jokes uh -huh. and things before the concert? Yeah. We did some concert. Yeah. Nobody even gave us a, but I have Bob Hope signatures here. So, so I'll use that as a little segue. I want to come back to, the, to talking about uh, today's soccer's and what's going on with indoor soccer today, um, but first, um, I want I, I, we've, in our visit here today, we've talked a little bit about some of your collections. So I want to take a, some a couple of minutes here just to talk about that. I mean, you've got here in front of us um, a small amount of very, your, very small a small amount of your collections of photographs. Um, 
There's a bunch of them there in your kitchen. We're sitting in, if Tim could pan the room a little bit, we're, this is part of his um, book collection. No. These are all signed, is that yes, correct? Yes, all of them, yes. All of these are signed books? Um, and Those are limited editions, and then these are signed by the authors and the movie stars that I was lucky enough to these are, these are signed by the the uh, movie stars or the authors, or the of, authors the books. of the books. Yeah. Um, and this is also just a small collection of um, we've seen. Um, I think a lot of you guys watching are familiar with uh, Julie V as an artist. Um, most of us have seen some of the uh, sport art that he's done. I was only familiar with the sport art that he's done. Um, I hadn't seen the other things that he has all over this house. Um, and it's it's amazing. So talk about some of your collecting and what you're doing here personally in your life well, today. Well, first I started collecting comic books and books because uh, that taught me how to read English. It was easy. Okay. Wow, wow, bang, bam, bang. You know, if you don't speak English, that's comic books are pictures. Crazy. I had no yeah. idea that's what got you started in oh, comic yeah. books. And I read okay. westerns, you know, okay. and, and mysteries, okay. Robert Christie's and stuff. It's easy to read, though, right. which is not so complicated. Right. And so it helped me with my English. Okay. Then I met some wonderful friends who were godfather to my children, mm. uh, Status Orfanos, that you saw his photographs. Yep. And they were in the book business, so naturally I got drawn to that and then start collecting books and uh, the money that I made I bought uh, so I give you an example I bought a Disney sales oh crazy so in those Great. days yeah I could buy them for fifteen dollar to twenty dollar yep. full yep. face yep and uh, if you someone doesn't know what Disney sells, those are hand drawn right they're hand drawn hand painted and um, hand transparent painted upside down Meaning right, like right, right. You do the dark colors or the highlights first. Okay, it's a no, nightmare. No. It's it's unbelievable. So I start collecting that. So when I finished with the suckers, yeah, in '88, right. I had no money. You know, I you know I still I was divorced, paying the alimony and the child support. Not only did you not, did you have no money, you had people owing you money. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm just a father. Yeah. <laughs> If, if you see it, please, <laughs> please give me my money back. Wow. Oh, never go. I mean, we made peace and everything after that. You know, How can but, you make peace with somebody that owes you $70,000? Well, well, I think I was 40 or 50. Okay. I can't remember exactly. Yeah, okay. but he took it from the other boys too. Wow. I told the boys, go on strike. He said, oh, you closed the... I said, you guys can get a job anywhere. Right. I said, I can go to Dallas right now and make 50 grand. Right. Are you kidding me? Like Kevin Crow, he right. could have made a hundred grand sure. still playing, you know? Sure. So, well, so, um, it's what it is, it's what the, it is. The thing that's impressing me about the, your collections is the, the how many of these things have autographs. I mean, it's one thing to get the book or to get the photographs, but to get them signed, um, and I asked you about that earlier. These were signed. A lot of these were signed in your presence. I mean, you had... right? Yeah. Either I met them or my friends were who lived in Hollywood, and I went to collect books. So going back to the collection, right? So I collected Disney cells. So I left a right. lot of Disney cells with the first wife. Okay. You know, with the children, saying, "Well, when the time comes, you can sell it and give it to the kids." Then I started my own collection. Oh wow! Because I found the source and. This guy had him for fifteen to twenty bucks. You couldn't. You no could, kidding. You could not pass or not have it. Wow. So, I, so the long story, I sold at like eighty grand. So these are you're talking about original Disney sales. Yes. Fr from I have saw I'll show you one somebody from, from from their from these are from the animated movies that they did. Yes, like uh, you know Sleeping Beauty or something. It. Yeah, everybody. Yeah. Wow. The earlier, like for example, if you're looking at. Um, Pinocchio, okay, or or uh, the Seven Dwarfs, right? Snow White, Snow White. They used to wash off the mylar with acetone, and because the plastic was more valuable. No way! So they would do so this early artwork. one in the 38, 39. I had no idea. They would wash it and then reuse and reuse it. it. So there are very few of them left. I would say so. Yes, and then later on. Uh, you know, like the Xerox comes in in the 70s sure. with Pongo, what is that, with the dogs, you know, the 
you know, when they eat the spaghetti together. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, um, lady in the tram. Yeah, exactly. So by that time, they Xeroxing, but until then, everything is hand-drawn. And then on the other side, they start painting it backwards. This is extraordinary. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So it helped me to pay for some of the bills. Uh -huh. I never was the player who's going to go out buy, you know, a new car or whatever. Right. And, uh, you know, a lot of players in athletics, are, they grow up poor or yes. uneducated. And right. They get a lot of money. Look at what happens right away. They right. lose it. Right. Did, did, they it, take into the cleaners, buy mommy a house and buy. And then after that, they get caught. There is no money. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's hopeless. Right. So I never, I put it into collectibles that I cared for. Nice. You know, not because they're going to go up in value, mm. but once someone signs, you know, like anything that it, it has a value to it. Sure. You know, how many times that person going to sign it? Right. You know. Julie, when the soccer started back up in 2009, 2010, um, you uh, apparently had decided or were, were um, were compelled anyway to be part of the color commentation. You picked up a microphone. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. You picked up a microphone and you were helping um, uh, uh, Craig Elston. Yeah, Craig was good. Yeah, right. They, they said be positive. I said the other team leads six nothing. What are you going to be positive about? <laughs> but I thought it was really cool how Phil Salvaggio um, uh, reached out to make connections to a lot of the original soccer's. Yes, I think they did a good job. They're still doing a good job. And I, you know, I have to credit John Cantera who got him back into the arena. Right. He he did a fantastic job right. because uh, uh, that company would not going to let us back in. Well, um my son and I enjoyed the Del Mar uh, uh venue. It was fun, but it's not it's not Yeah, it was bush league really. I mean, cold the wind came in, and right. the, remember the, oh, yes, the rain remember. was coming in. The boys could die on the. I mean, was, <laughs> you know, I mean, it was that's, a that's why. Bush. That's why the nobody nobody knows this, but no, that's why the scarf became so traditional in San Diego was because of the wind blowing well, off the ocean in Del Mar. I mean, I've, pro I've froze to that several times. I should get Phil to pay me extra money for <laughs> for being frozen there. Yeah. That yeah, was nice, but it, was it wasn't fun. my cup of tea. You know, right. I mean, uh, you know other, and, other players can do it better than I can. And in the, uh, in the um, PASL, um, it, it was... Uh, it was a fun start, but there's been a but there's been a lot of growth. W I think in the they're last playing fantastic. I mean, these boys could have played at any other club at any time and be played. I, I was going to ask you the, that. The problem is this: just as uh, the organization needs to make the next step so they can get paid. Right. These boys, you know, the fans need to know that these boys are playing their hearts out. They're not making a lot of money. Right. We were lucky right. to catch that one. That's right. And I know because I worked and played yes for nothing also so i understand that these boys come out and do the job what do you think the problem is with the with the people the number of people in the fan in the stands why what do you think it is that's keeping the soccer's friends i mean come on the san diego gulls are selling out down there right now and the san diego soccer's are bringing four thousand in on a good day in a venue that holds 12 well they get the best dates they got number one they did and they have the national hockey league behind them okay advertisement and everything else right the club has to do everything on their own travel arrangements and there's not a big i don't think they have a big sponsor yet they're doing the best they can yeah. compared to when they started out with i mean know. but there's a, but there's a history with the san diego soccer's i mean and yet still yeah but they the walked away a lot of times Remember, we right. finished the season. Then, then I think the Ancero family, Mexican family, came in to say, we're going to continue. Mm -hmm. But they didn't want to put money in it. Mm -hmm. I remember when Quinny coached mm -hmm. for them, I think, mm -hmm. yes, at he did. first. Yeah. And that lasted for a couple of years. Well, and then it folded mid-season. Mid yeah, they went away. They didn't pay the bills. Mm -hmm. And then Dave Altamar picked it up. Mm -hmm. Then promptly he lost like four or five million bucks. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how they arranged that one. The players' salaries were in a lot. I think they were. So one of grand. my thing, one of my theories is that 
because of leagues, leagues and teams um, coming and going so ridiculously in indoor soccer that the fan out there and and major news media too um, are just not willing to make the investment. Yeah, it could be. I don't. I don't mean. I don't. Mean, I don't mean financial investment. Yeah, but you know, uh, we had we, we we tapped into the pulse. We were blue color. Mm. My parents worked all their life. Mm. Most of the boys, Martin, grew up at Falls Road, mm. uh, right in the, in Belfast. Uh, they right. were bombing each other. Yeah. I mean, you're looking at our lineup, and they were all blue color, and we resonated with the people. Right. 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 Now that you, they walked away. With the Onsiros, Quinny coach, then the, the Altomar came back with Quinny again. They're building it up again. Right. And then after three and a half years, they went defunct again. Right. And thanks to Phil that he brings it back. So when Phil brought it back, um, he made a real big commitment on sticking with local talent, too. I love it. I think, I think it, the yeah, that should add more to the... You would think. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I love it. I yeah. Mean, I mean, there's not as, it's, it's yeah. not as big. it's not as big a population today... Of San Diego locals on the team, but there are still a few. Um, but when he started, it was half the team was from San Diego or Tijuana. Yeah, but guess what? When we started out, there was nobody from San Diego. Yeah, I know. So I mean, I, I, I applaud that. Right. Uh, yes, absolutely. And these kids grew up with the myth of playing for San Diego. Right. I don't know what the catch is. You know what? Mark Twain said it best: "Any idiot can write a book." Mm-hmm. It takes a genius to sell it, right? And I think it's okay. So the marketing art, and the art, the mark. Look right. at the, this uh, young kid, uh, Sean. Did a fantastic job as a general manager. Yeah, Sean Bowers. Yeah, Sean Bowers is hand. He's one of the best I've seen. I think so too. Shane, his buddy. I love him. Yeah, he's Shane a great is guy. he's he's bringing in corporate sponsorship. Yeah, he's doing a good job. I think they do the best they can under these circumstances until you need a catch. Mm-hmm. And, and the other thing I was trying to tell them is this is America. And, of course, in Europe it happens. you got to have a star or yes. a couple of stars. Right. And, and if you don't have one, then right. you're just going to trudge along because you. Bob Bell said to us, do anything you want. Just don't go to jail <laughs> to get press. And we right. did. That's right. We did enough press because I was watching the boys the other day, looked in the paper and I found a little snippet this much. That's all. It broke my heart because I know exactly that I went through when we played. And then the last page, you might have the score in. Right. And the Padres, is the Chargers. Right. Right. They're losing and they have a big color picture in That's the right. front. That's right. I'm there always, was, yeah. There was a period of time, though, when you were playing when... The, when well, when, when we got the press. Yeah. Right. When the press was there, the first... The, the, the soccer's result with a photograph, front page of the sports section. Yeah, but look at the colorful character. Look at Bichaikovsky. You know? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Look at Bokmar Gross or no, Alan Mayer. No kidding. Or, you or yourself. Know, or look at Quinny coming yeah, in later. Absolutely. Look at, I mean, there was some buzz and things, and mm-hmm. we didn't adhere to the norm of the American athlete who just sits there dumb and, oh, it's mm-hmm. a good game. What good game? You beat them 40, 41 to nothing. <laughs> yes. That's not a good game. Right. But the owners run the show there, and we were allowed to speak a little extra here. They yeah. need a couple of, you know, they need a couple of stars. You know, the... Um, uh, there was a lot of charisma back on, on the teams you played in. I mean, yeah, and then the, we, there was a lot of character, the different, the, you guys, you guys really, and it showed. Well, Ron, Ron's best quote for me was, you know, Julie puts his foot in it all the time, but at least he can back it up. Nice. <laughs> I wouldn't say anything until I can back it up. Nice. But, you know, it's like you don't talk, you don't do anything before the game. You back it up right. you know, while you're playing or after. What uh, Did you watch the game yesterday? No, I did not. Yeah. What was the score? They lost 6-4. to four. That's just close. In Monterey. Um, so why not have the game back here? It was a single elimination setup. So Why? You see, again, it's a problem because this would have given the soccer a chance mm-hmm. to say, we have a chance to make the finals. Right. You would have had six, 7,000 people out there. Yeah, I think so. And you're cutting them at the half just right. when you needed the most. I don't know why they made that choice. Um, that they, sounds ridiculous. They, they, they played Away sim- from home. I mean, why? Right. They played uh, the semifinals and the finals this year for the first time is a single elimination game. 
at the at the home of the higher seed, the regular season record. Senseless. So yeah, so there's there's no opportunity. Senseless. You should have a chance, and then maybe a third game decided. Back well, there if they have to. I mean, that's what right. it should be. So, um, what I mean, speculating here, uh, is it travel money? Is it venue availability? Um, what do you think? Uh, you have to ask the soccer. You on know, that one. I don't see that they go through the whole season traveling and paying and doing that one extra game is not going to kill you. Right. Right. Go for it. I mean, right. And I don't know if they have a. A say right. in it. I don't know what the right. You know, we listen. I I signed the Nike contract. You know, and was it for four years? And they didn't want to. They, they the the league said we're not gonna let you play in it because it's not black. Okay. Remember, I used to play with my shoes. The yep. Yep. Sorry. It's okay. We cut. Yeah, that's the beefet she's going to lunch. So. Um, I don't know what it is. You know, you have right. to you have to talk to the boys and right. see. What I mean, certainly, I would want. I would think that the soccer's would want another home game. Right. Well, everybody does. Doing so well. No, everybody does. So, um, every all of the teams and, and going fans. into the final on right. top of it. I mean, right. it would make sense. Yeah, yeah, and everybody wants that. Um, well, let me, I'm gonna I'm gonna read out my closing here, uh, Julie. The San Diego Soccer has given me a lifetime of memories that no team in San Diego can touch, and few teams in any sport can approach. I mean, it's been uh, it, it's been 40 years. It's been a long run. It's been 40 years, and I've been in the stands and watching this whole thing and being a fan of this since it all started. Well, thank you. Um, I love the game. It breaks my heart when uh, so many. Short-sighted people have damaged the public impression of the sport, and I say that I say that based on what a lot of the comments that you've made today. No. Um, it was there was so much potential when you played for the game to solidify the spot in the American sport picture. Um, I still believe it can one day get there, and when it does, it will always be you and your generation of players that got it all started. There have been a lot of great players come through San Diego, and there's going to be, but it will always be the house that V built. Well, thank you. You're very kind. Um, Listen, I you know, I talked to some of the MLS. They don't even want to talk about the NASL. No, I know. This is how stupid they are. No, I know. You know, you talk about Pele and Giorgio Kinagla. Right. What about half the world playing here from Croyfan? Name any player who was worth anything, ended up here. Right. Franz Beckenbauer. Every, just name him. Right. They're here. And then not to even talk about it and totally ignoring it. Like it never happened. Like it's, well, it was just Pele and Giorgio and that's it. And, and that's it. What about the other hundreds of boys who played for six to eight years? Right. Nonstop for those franchises. I know. You know, it's a betraying of the, of the past and it's a betrayal of... Of, of football history. Well, in America, it's ridiculous. It is, I mean, it, it is ridiculous. Why? There is no point. Um, I want to thank you very much for letting us come to your home today. Absolutely. Um, this has really been a blessing. Um, and guys, how fun is this? Julie V for what the last hour. Uh, thanks so much for, thank for you. having me. In thank you for doing here. this for the soccer. I appreciate and, uh, it. This has been Ponto Off the Wall. Thank you for watching.